Hey everybody and welcome to the last video of 2024 here at the Tinkerverse. So we're going to take a look at six more tips in Lightburn to round out the year and uh, kick off 2025 with maybe some things you didn't know about. So let's get started. So did you know in Lightburn that you can configure your saved files to uh, contain their own notes and pop up those notes every time you open the file? So let's take a look at one that I did recently. And when I open that, you'll see that it pops up a note window. And in this case, it's just a test note. And it just reminds me that I want to defocus my engraving and that this was for a special client. So if you have any type of information that you need to save with your file, rather than keeping you know separate text files or offline uh, handwritten notes, you can create them right in Lightburn by going up to File and going to Show Notes. And show notes will always bring up your notes window, or you can turn on and toggle on and off the show on file open. So if I turn this off and save this file, this won't pop up on open, but with this on by default, or with this on when I save the file, every time I open this file, let me go to new, we'll save that, and then reopen the other file. Again, it'll pop up those notes. So that's show notes in Lightburn, and that's your first tip to close out the year. Okay, so our next tip is around the arrange window, and actually the next several tips are all gonna be around the arrange window. And we're gonna take a look first at the rubber band outline. Uh, I have a group of shapes on screen here, and I'm gonna create what's called a rubber band outline around these. And what that does is, if you were to picture these, let's say sitting on your desk, and you were to wrap a rubber band around them, the rubber band would follow the contour of the shape until it bridges to the next shape, at which point it would go from the high point to the high point. Then it would follow the contours again, and then again, bridge the high points to the following, to, to the next shape in the, in, in the, you know, in the order. So if I go up to arrange and I go to create rubber band outline from selection, you'll see that it does exactly that. It's as if I were to take a rubber band and wrap it around the entire uh, shape collection that I have selected. So if I only selected two of these shapes and did a arrange create rubber band, you'll see that it rubber bands between the two of them. So whatever I have selected, it will act as if I were wrapping a rubber band completely around them. So now where that differs from offset fill, or I'm sorry, where that differs from offset is offset will attempt to follow the contour of each individual shape. So you'll see here that my contour follows each of these shapes until they start to interact with each other. And then it just bridges and follows as much of the contour as possible until it gets to the next shape and then continues on. So that's how that differs from rubber band. So the offset is great if you want to cut and follow along the shape, uh, whereas the rubber band gives you the opportunity to maybe cut it a little bit differently than, uh, than following the contour, but it also gives you the opportunity to create some really unique shapes based on your shape placement on the screen. So that is the rubber band outline in Lightburn. So next up, we're gonna look at break apart. So what break apart does is it breaks the shape up at the nodes. So if I look at the nodes for this, you'll see that I've got all my key points here on my corners, and then as I get into my curve, uh, there's multiple nodes around here. So if I were to select this and go to Arrange and go to Break Apart or just hit Alt-B, what it does is each one of these now becomes its own shape. So I can come in here and I can move things around and on the circle, it would have gone from node to node <clears throat> and I can break these apart and do whatever I wanna do with them. So br break apart is a good way to kind of, you know, come in here with a little scalpel almost and start pulling things apart and manipulating them, um, you know, from a more complex shape. So next up, we've got mirror across line. So let's say I have this shape here. Uh, I'm actually going to set this up to mirror across line and create a, a little umbrella. So I take my vertical line, I'm gonna select my object or my shape that I want, and I'm gonna select the line to mirror across. And then I can choose to mirror across line with the toolbar. So you've got mirror vertical, mirror horizontal, and then mirror across line. 
and you can see what that does. Or I can come up to a range, say mirror across line, or use Control Shift M for the hotkeys. So if I do that, let me select that. Let me select my shape and Control Shift M. And there you go. So I've now mirrored across the line and I've got this little umbrella shape. Um, and then so what I might do from here is just delete this and then come in here and union those together. And there you go. So mirror across line is uh, is just another mirroring option and allows you to control how you want the mirroring to occur. Uh, similarly, if I took this line and put it here, when I do mirror across line, it's going to basically give me a rotated version of the original with the alignment in the same position along the line, but flip it 180 degrees. So, you know, play around with mirror across the line. You can, again, do some pretty fun stuff with that. Next up, we've got copy along path. And so I'm going to draw myself a little path here and let's do some curves. Uh, yeah, it looks about good. And then I'm going to put a little square at the base of this. And so what I want to do is I want to copy this square so that it follows this curved line all the way across. And so I'm going to grab the square and I'm going to grab the curve and I'm going to choose arrange and copy along path. And what it'll do is it'll give me a little pop-up window that allows me to adjust the number of copies that I want. Um, I can manually adjust spacing, uh, I can adjust scale, and we'll look at that in a second. But so let's say I want to just copy, let's do 30. So you've got 30 squares now that follow along this path. Now I can scale these copies and I can say I want the last, ver the last instance of that square to be, let's say, 1% of what the original was. So each one of these is going to shrink down until it hits that 1% at the last shape. If I wanna go 300%, uh, that's a little big, let's go 200%. So the last, again, the last copy will be 200% larger than the original. Um, wow, that's a cool shape. Ah, see what happens when you typo, is sometimes you find some neat things. Okay, so now let's say we have that. Um, and the next thing I want to do is rotate copies. So what rotate copies is going to do is as it's following along the path, it's actually going to rotate each of the copies. Um, you know, let's, let's simplify this a little bit. So let's go to 10 and you can see that it actually rotates as it goes. Um, so each increment is ro rotated a little bit further than the rest. And then if I were doing variable text, I could auto increment variable text along the way as well. Um, so that is copy along path. And, you know, as you saw, you can get some pretty neat, uh, you know, results from something like that. All right. And last up, we're going to take a look at lock selected shapes. So let me bring a shape onto the screen here and I'm going to zoom this in. Okay. So I've got a shape here and I want this to not be affected by anything else that I do from this point forward. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say lock selected shapes. And you'll notice when I select it that I get these little plus signs at each of the corners. I no longer have my drag handles or my rotate handle or anything else that allow me to manipulate this. I can't move it. I can't resize it. I can't change the layers on it. I can't do anything with it. It is 100% locked. And so let me come in here and I'm going to add some text. And let's get that all positioned and shaped. And what's basically going to happen here is I'm everything I'm doing has absolutely no impact on that background scroll work material there. So turn off my sidebars for a second. Okay, so I think that's lined up the way I want it to be. Um, and so you'll see it's on the same layer. It's on the black layer, but even if I do a control A to select everything, when I move, it's only gonna move the piece that's not locked or the pieces that are not locked. Um, so if I try to union these, again, because it's locked, it won't let me. So what I need to do now is then unlock. So I'll select this and say unlock selected shapes. And then I can grab these, union them together. And now I've got my, uh, my scroll work monogram there with all the text in place.
So locking something in place is a good way if you're trying to work with a fixed, let's say you've got a fixed shape of, uh, of something that's pre-cut that you want to work with and you've already scaled it and sized it and just have it on the screen and you want to manipulate an engraving on top of it without ever changing the size, shape, position or anything about that original uh, kind of template. Um, locking is a great way to do that. As you'll notice throughout the video, I did a couple of things that maybe you didn't catch on to, maybe you did. Um, the first of which is that I was able to quickly turn off all my uh, windows with a hotkey. So you can come up here to window and you can choose uh, window toggle side panels or you can just use the F12 key. And so if I hit F12, you'll notice it turns off all my side windows. So even if I had let's say this window off over here and I'm working and I just need more real estate to see what I'm working on. I can quickly hit F12 and it shuts off all the noise and it leaves me with nothing but my workspace and my toolbar. Uh, so if you ever accidentally lose everything, maybe it's because you hit F12 while you were, you know, that you typoed it or something like that. Um, and just remember, you can always get your workspace back by going to window, reset to default, and everything about your workspace will reset to just as it was out of the box. Um, so anyway, so that was F12. That's one bonus. And the other one is, um, you'll see as I'm moving things around here, if you hold the space bar, the space bar automatically brings up the little grabber handle and I can grab and move my workspace around uh, with just a left click mouse. So it gives me a way to, as I'm working, I can scroll around and I can just quickly drag things around by grabbing the space bar and, you know, click and drag. So those are my two bonus tips is F12 to turn off, uh, turn off your windows and then space bar to do your grab handle and, uh, and move your workspace around. So there you go. Uh, so that wraps up 2024 with um, six, uh, I guess, eight more tips that maybe you didn't uh, know about in Lightburn before, and now you do. So until uh, next time, we will catch you guys later.